Oh, Thanks for tuning in, guys. The Pest and Lawn Ginger, and these are my four steps to get in a banging lawn in the springtime. Now, my lawn came out of its winter dormancy just looking like this, and it stayed this way almost all winter long. But if your lawn is an average lawn and you've got a lot of brown in it, we're gonna go over my four easy steps. Now, chances are you've got an average lawn that's coming out of winter looking brown and dingy and you want it to look green and lush. Now the fact of the matter is when you get on top of these lawns what's ended up happening is they just didn't have any water in the soil to keep the blades of the grass green and it ends up going dormant. Now all this dead matter has to come out. Which leads me to step number one and that is scalp mowing your lawn. You want to get as much as dead tissue out so we can promote some new growth. So the best thing you could do is get in on the lawn with a measuring tape and just measure how deep the dysfunction goes and then set your lawn mower accordingly. I recommend usually setting it to about an inch and a half just to get a nice clean slate for the mower. Now this is not going to cause any damage because the damage has already been done. That tissue is already dead. We just want to get it off of the surface so we can expose the green grass that's about to come. Steps number two and three go hand in hand. We want to remove all the debris off of the soil surface and we also want to do a process called scarification by running slits throughout the entire lawn. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. These are by far my favorite tools that you can purchase as a homeowner. They're both the same. These are dethatchers and scarifiers. This one is a corded version. This one is a, a wireless version by Ryobi. The, the number one thing is the dethatcher here is going to remove all that debris off of the soil surface. It's basically just a rake. It's got these little tines that really pull all the gook off of the surface of the soil. Now this right here is called a scarifier. It's got these blades that score into the ground. This one goes on top of the surface. This one goes about a quarter of an inch into the soil surface. So let's talk about why the dethatching and the scarifying is such an important part of this process. Number one, if we just look at my lawn, at the soil surface, you know, I spend a lot of time getting debris out of here, but I still have gook here and there because me and the neighboring properties have maple trees. And so I get these seeds just everywhere. Now here's the visual, right? Let's just say that we didn't do a very good cleanup and this is the amount of maple seeds that I would have over every square inch of my yard. Ultimately, this is going to prohibit new blade growth from coming up. Not to mention if you have a lawn that looks very similar to the neighboring property where it's dormant and all that dead tissue is there, it's folding over and going on the soil surface. By getting that up, it promotes new growth. Now getting back to the scarifier machine, that is going to till through what's called the thatch layer, which is the topical layer of the root mass. What we are doing is we are basically ripping through the thatch to encourage new blade growth. Now here's my opinion on this one. It is way better for the soil to run the scarifier than it is to run an aerator. So if you're one of those people that goes to rent an aerator, spend the money, spend the 150 bucks on one of these dethatchers and scarifiers and save yourself the 65, $85 rental. Those machines are just going to pay for itself tenfold. Dude, this mow, it looks so good. Now, one of the biggest questions I get about step number two and step number three is do I dethatch first or a scarifier first? Here's my two cents. I prefer to dethatch first and scarify second. I like to get all the debris off of the top. Then I like to dig my slits. And when I do the scarifying, I'm gonna go two different ways. But when I dethatch, I'm gonna go as many times as it takes to get 80% of the debris out of the lawn. And the first two times, if you've never done this before, it's gonna be very overwhelming. Now with me, what I like to do with the dethatcher is I like to go over one pass and I blow the debris off with my backpack blower. 
That is the easiest way. If you're gonna be raking all day long and putting it in the garbage can, your lower back is gonna be killing you. But with the scarifier where it's gonna dig about a quarter of an inch into the lawn, you're still gonna be getting more debris out, which a lot of you guys online say, hey, listen, I like to cut to the chase do the scarifier first, then come back with the dethatcher. Ultimately, there's really no wrong way of doing it. Preference is fine, it's just this is what I prefer. Okay, so I did about 500 square feet of my lawn, and uh, commonly I don't use the bag, but you have to understand, I've been uh, dethatching my lawn about monthly, but lots of debris. And I do have a lot of live tissue here, went a little bit aggressive. Thinning out the lawn early spring isn't a bad thing because I'm going to scarify it and it's going to promote new growth anyway, so I'm not as concerned. Ideally though, I wouldn't like to see this much good tissue coming out. I've got one of two choices. I can raise the machine or I can simply keep going and worry about the lawn thickening up later. But you can see it's it does a great job removing all these seeds and there's a couple hundred in here and it's extremely fast. I dare say this is faster than using my blower to get the debris off. For sure, I look like the crazy cat lady out there uh, vacuuming my lawn, but it's all gonna pay off. Step number four is such an easy process. It's just going to your local nursery or hardware store and grabbing a bag of fertilizer that, where its contents are high in nitrogen. Now in my local region, I'm just grabbing a bag of 20-0-0. Now a 20 zero, zero is straight nitrogen, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Nitrogen is the first number on the bag and also the most important ingredient for springtime when the soil temps are between 38 and 45 degrees. It's going to help promote brand new growth. It's gonna kickstart the lawn into growing again. And the sooner that we can make this happen, the happier your lawn is going to be. It's gonna get thicker and lusher faster. Now I'll make it clear, I'm not sponsored by this company whatsoever. This is just what I prefer in the springtime to wake the lawns up. It is very, very fine and this is nitrogen only. Now, as far as watering goes, early springtime, a lot of you guys are on water restrictions, but it's also in climates that are getting cold and have a lot of morning dew in the morning. You really don't have to worry about watering, especially if you're getting storm systems coming in. But at the end of the day, the ultimate rule of thumb is we never want the soil to completely dry out. So at times you're gonna to need to come out here and spot water with your hose bib in some of the hot spots. Now guys, if you are looking to slay that lawn and be the envy of your neighborhood, follow these four easy steps. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up down in the comments down below. You know I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time guys, the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying lawns.